Hey guys, it's Edward. So today, I wanted to talk about getting promoted at work. And while you might see a lot of videos on this topic for engineering or whatever in your professional life, there are a few things that are left out of the conversation. And most videos only talk about going from a junior to a mid-level developer role and really don't talk about the higher levels. But I believe that people are making promotions and evaluations way too complicated. Of course, annual review and performance is always gonna be nerve wracking, but I also think that this fear and worry is what is contributing to a lot of confusion in the conversation. While most people believe that getting promoted is about hustling, putting in more hours than anyone else, I believe it actually boils down to just one factor, how effectively you're able to apply your knowledge of engineering. The truth is that you need to get real results and consistently deliver those results. And if you cannot do that, you do not deserve to get to the next level. As an ex-Apple senior engineer, I have been a check to promoting people to the mid and senior level. And in some cases, I've even been part of the process for recommendations to upper senior or staff, which is approximately L5B at Uber. Also, I used to be actively involved in the hiring of senior engineers at Apple. And so having been on both sides of the table, being promoted and being the person who judges other people for promotions and up-leveling, there are a lot of factors most people do not think about when they try to get promoted. So in this video, I'll outline the expectations for a junior, mid-level, and senior engineer otherwise known as L3, L4, and L5. I'll also explain what it takes to get promoted, what I personally look for when judging the engineer, and common issues I see about why engineers don't get promoted. I'll also share with you one of my biggest tips for getting promoted easier and faster than any of your colleagues. And I'll dive into the reasoning using everything that I've talked about here. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe and watch this until the very end. It lets me know that you like videos like this and you wanna see more of them. And if you follow me on my socials, you can vote for what topic I cover next. So with that, let's begin. All right, let's start with the expectations at every level. For reference, I'll be using the Square Engineering Ladder as a basis and tune it to what I've seen both at Apple and Uber. While the expectations may vary from company to company, I find this one pretty on par with the expectations. I'll link it down below. At the junior L3 level, the expectation is that you can get onboarded with the engineering process and get familiar with it. You will understand the basics of it and how to navigate a corporate environment for engineering. You just need to get familiar with the process, ERDs, code reviews, fixing bugs, whatever. But also, you're expected to write performant code and fix bugs under someone else's leadership and guidance. At this point, you aren't necessarily leading a project, but you're pretty much expected to do what you're told and internalize every step of it. Someone's gonna prepare for you a list of tasks that need to be done, whether that is bugs or part of a project, and your job is to actually do it. Of course, being a junior engineer, you're always gonna to have to ask some people for help and guidance on how to actually do it, but you'll have a lot of support while doing so. At the L4 mid-level, you should not need any hand-holding, but you might need some help when making final decisions. You can start to write design documents, solve problems efficiently, and start to interview other people. The quality of the code that you write is clear, maintainable, and can easily be reused. You own a portion of the project that you write, and you are capable of building upon it as it's needed. Compared to the previous level, where you were just writing code to fix that one particular task, here, you're gonna start thinking about the long term. And all you really have to do is follow a general skeleton or guideline that someone else has laid out for you. You can begin to break down tasks, figure out how to arrange them to meet deadlines and goals, and in a sense, you're a caretaker and an individual executor of the tasks you are given. Now, at the senior L5 level, you're expected to have a very clear and strong domain knowledge of a particular tech stack. You are also responsible for leading and owning all the code of the project, even if it's not code being written by you. That's right, you're going to be responsible for managing and leading a small team of maybe three to five engineers. At this level, you begin to see and understand how problems not just affect the current tech stack you're working on, but also affect things across the board. You also have a deeper understanding of how that affects your fellow engineers. In this way, you also act as part manager because projects require you to lead more people. So you need to learn how to delegate and pass things off to people who are more suited to work on them. The project also becomes more agnostic. You might know what's being asked, but you might not know how to do it, yet you're expected to fill in the blanks. And you need to do this while ensuring that the code is optimized for the current use cases and future ones. Oh, and did I mention that you're also responsible for running around to various stakeholders like biz dev and product designers and negotiating between all of them, all while protecting the code base? Yeah, sounds like a lot of work. 
And it really is. At the L6 staff engineer level, you're probably the top 1% of engineers at your company, and the people you manage jumps from maybe about four to five to about 100 or more. At this level, your work has less to do with actual coding and mostly scoping and researching ideas. You provide the skeleton and due diligence, check and call bullshit on bad initiatives, cross technical boundaries to solve issues, and for the most part, are able to create a goal and input on a project that has no clear solution. Since you don't hear too much about staff software engineers and their projects, let me give you an example. Of course, I'm gonna alter these details for privacy purposes, but this should give you a general idea. Suppose you are given the task of shaving off 15% of your code's build time. You would come up with a multi-point initiative of all the problem areas, like unnecessary dependency imports, overexposing dependencies, and so on. So you deep dive into the build system and you realize in order to accomplish this, you need to introduce a Golang compilation step into the build flow. On top of that, you need to also create new heuristics in the build system to skip unnecessary recompilations in order to optimize performance. Your tool also needs to manage all these problem areas and solutions in a smooth and easy to reuse way that works well in the currently existing code base. And so the way you would do this would be writing out a skeleton of each of these efforts with a step-by-step -step of how to do it and be responsible for delegating those tasks to senior developers who they themselves will actually subdivide the tasks to their team members. All while justifying every single step that you do and every single resource you take to the VP and keeping other teams in the loop about its progress and importance. And in fact, at some point, you might even need to get buy-in from hundreds of teams as well. Other examples would be leading the effort to migrate a million line code base from one language to another. I've already talked about this one in a previous video, so check it out here if you're interested in seeing how Uber migrated their iOS project to Swift. Yes, whoever was responsible for leading that is a staff software engineer. And yes, there's a lot of details here that warrants its own video, but for the sake of discussion, just consider that the impact you're having isn't on just two or three people, it's on hundreds of people in your company. So let's move on to how you get promoted. Generally speaking, you need to be performing at a higher level for at least two cycles, which can be annual or semi-annual, depending on the company. For instance, if you're an L3 engineer, you would need to be performing at the L4 level for almost two years before even seeing a promotion. However, the time to get promoted at each band is actually quite different. Going from a junior to mid-level engineer should happen within two years. Going from a mid-level to senior level can be a minimum of three additional years on top of that, but usually at an average of five. So you can expect about five to eight years before you even touch senior level. And going from a senior to staff level can take you an additional five more years on top of that. So you can expect to hit staff level by maybe 10 years of experience at minimum. The reason for this is that all the knowledge and habits to execute at each one of these levels takes more time than the last. All this is developed through years of trial and error of different ways of viewing things, different scenarios, and trying different methods. And as you get higher up, the feedback loop also becomes longer. To go from an L3 to L4 level, you just really need to learn clean coding habits and copy what other people do and do what you're told, with the feedback coming to you in a matter of days. Comparatively, to go from an L4 to L5 level, you have to start learning about the blast radius of your code, how to start crossing architectural boundaries of the tech stack, how to manage your own code from start to deployment, how to make it maintainable, and do this all in the context of an engineering organization where multiple teams have multiple interests. In order to do this, you need a deep mastery of your own tech stack and engineering in general. Other people can ask you about language agnostic techniques and get guidance. This means your ability to critically think and troubleshoot any issue should be absolutely top tier. The senior engineer feedback loop is much longer, sometimes even months. Decisions that you made won't be fully realized until four or five months later when you need to maintain or upgrade that code. And it's only then do you realize that your design was good or bad. As a result, your adjustments are constantly delayed by months. So being able to rapidly change, think about the way you're doing things and proceeding and becoming better just takes that much longer. On top of that, because you're given more responsibility, the price of failure is actually costlier and you'll need to spend a lot of time fixing those mistakes. Simply put, the mistakes that you need to make and knowledge that you need to acquire through those mistakes and experience makes the learning curve exponentially higher as you go up the ladder. Hence, the longer time to promotions. And so because of that, you shouldn't expect to get promoted every two years. In fact, you have to be a freaking genius to do that. But when you get promoted, you don't get promoted to the middle of the band. Most likely, you begin at the lowest 33rd percentile and your paycheck will actually reflect this. So just because you get promoted to a senior level does not necessarily mean you're performing at an average senior level. You're starting at the bottom of your band again. So what do I think the biggest weakness of engineers is at each level? Why might you not get promoted? And why might I personally be rejecting you? 
At the L3 level, the biggest mistake I see is overthinking and overdoing things. This leads people to deliver subpar code or awkwardly not follow instructions. I think a lot of the people struggle at this level because they have trouble drinking from the fire hose, metaphorically speaking. To be able to take all the information that is given and to figure out what is useful and what is not. To filter the bullshit from the actually useful. Engineers at this level often feel the need to deliver big and will often try to overdo advice or underdo it in some other areas, or even tweaking things in order to try and fit some idea of what they think good work should be. This can lead to some very weird situations like very big code diffs that doesn't test as much as it should, and so on. And while people believe that junior engineers at this level don't listen, I personally see it more as engineers just trying to see what methods work and what doesn't. And this is all part of the learning process. Don't be too hard on yourselves. At the L4 mid-level role, people fundamentally lack a good understanding of their own tech stack. Sure, these people can write and pump out clean code if they know what the end goal is, but when it comes to troubleshooting or understanding what they're working on, they almost have zero knowledge and require help to get there. In fact, they tend to lack the ability to troubleshoot the idea themselves. As an example, they're more likely to ask, how do I deploy my backend code changes? Or how do I fix this bug? Instead, what they should be asking is, I'm thinking of two possible solutions for these changes. Here are the trade-offs. What do you think? In the second question, they're asking for input from their team members in order to make architectural and code decisions. They put so much thought into the execution that they never really put brain power into the bigger picture. The reality is that the execution and understanding should be autonomous, and the thinking should start shifting to the broader context in which the problem exists. The first example I gave was a question about execution. The second question is a consideration of how to solve the problem and the trade-offs. And the reason why this is a problem is because most people at the L4 level became mid-level engineers by mindlessly following the advice of a few good people they met and then parroting whatever idea they said without actually thinking too much into it. And in doing so, they actually over-rely on the collaborative aspect of engineering and get other people to explain and do the work for them. They are too focused on getting people together that they woefully neglect actually having the skill to analyze the tech they are actually responsible for writing with. Usually this manifests with their lack of an eye for care and quality in their own work. They do not understand the impact of their code in the long run and tend to make very short-sighted technical decisions. They think of bugs as unavoidable instead of trying to improve or prevent them in the first place. Imagine subjecting a team of three engineers to constantly clean up someone else's mistake. That's basically the cost of what we're dealing with here. At the L5 senior level, people try to solve problems that really aren't there. They tend to over-abstract and create projects that nobody cares about or has any use for and never will. They create ideas and tell other people to execute it without regard for its necessity. Also, don't be surprised if some of these people have the technical skill of an L4 engineer. So a lot of what I said earlier does still apply. Chances are, they've made it this far in their career by simply having people skills in order to get the job done, which is, you know, that's exactly what they're hired for. But again, they lack the depth of understanding of their own tech stack and only know one way of doing things without ever understanding why things are written the way they are. As a result, their modus operandi tends to be asking very high performing people how things are done, piecing the information together, and then delivering the result. They are capable of at least thinking about the problem in a greater context and are able to do a lot of project management work. In my opinion, this is what separates them from the L4 engineer. The issue here is that because they over rely on what people tell them, they are unable to really identify the correct context for the problem themselves. And so they misidentify the trade-offs. That can throw off execution and unravel months of work. And so in most cases, I look for missed due dates and how much effort is spent on maintenance as a measure of competence. Usually, the longer the missed date or the more maintenance that needs to be done, the weaker the engineer is. But the solution isn't really a managerial one. It has nothing to do with time management. It has everything to do with being able to improve your decision making and knowledge for the areas that they're actually responsible for. And because of that, if you can believe it or not, you can actually get to a senior level simply by being collaborative without becoming a better engineer. This is why so many L5 engineers actually transition to managers. Now, before I go, I want to give you one personal tip. If you're interested in getting promoted, don't think about the next level. Think about the next two levels. That is, if you're a junior engineer, think about what it takes to get to a senior engineer level. If you're a mid-level, think about what it takes to get to staff. So why would you do this? Few reasons. If you get promoted too early by doing short-term gains that do nothing for your long-term career, you'll be trapped in that method in order to try and uphold your status. You will feel like an imposter and continue to hold on to the same inefficient performance over and over again and make no progress as an engineer or a person. After all, you got the promotion so early that you are so afraid of making mistakes that people might realize, hey, wait a minute, this guy isn't qualified. 
But the fact of the matter is that you actually need to make those mistakes in order to get better. If you got to the L4 level by mindlessly following other people, then you're just gonna keep mindlessly following other people until you hit the L5 level, which at that point, your career progression is completely up to luck and the people you meet. If you're thinking about two levels ahead though, then you're forced to think in longer term thinking. As a junior engineer, I'd be thinking about how to become a senior engineer, which will require that I start contextualizing the mistakes I make in order to practice contextualizing them for projects and assignments. I would figure out what it takes to understand why things are the way they are. Why are certain comments left on my merge requests? What is the thinking behind it? And under what conditions would I receive those comments again? What would happen if I left this code in? And what would happen if it was allowed to fester? Would the architecture rot? What would happen to our code base? Would other people copy it? These are the type of questions I personally thought about every day when I was a junior engineer at Apple. I would constantly be reflecting back on my own code, my own thought process, and compared to other engineers who are at the senior level, I'd compare myself and just try to see how I could emulate their thinking and behavior. At an L4 level, you're gonna be aiming for a staff software engineer level. So at this point, I would try to figure out the proper way to expand the impact and understanding of your code figure out the issues that you might be facing and see if they exist on a company wide scale. Why are we writing the product this way? Can we write it faster and better? What is limiting our abilities? How would the company benefit if we were to change this? How much of the underlying tech do I need to understand in order to accomplish this? And how can I become worthy of other people's trust? What do I need to do in order to make sure that my code is 100% bug free so that people can follow my example and take me seriously? Actions speak louder than words. And if you're the engineer who is absolutely stable and can serve as the rock of the team, then everyone will respect you and listen to what you have to say. And the way to do this is to submit flawless code that does not necessarily need to be maintained that much and is very reliable. As for myself and the senior level role, I'd be trying to aim for an L7 position, which is, you know, senior staff or maybe even principal engineer. And unfortunately, I really haven't met a L7 engineer for me to properly formulate this. But believe me, I'm actually really trying. I'm really trying to reach out to these people to try and understand what they're thinking. But all the questions that I've listed before, I'm still thinking about on an everyday basis. I'm still looking to improve my work. I'm still looking to get a deeper understanding of the tech stack that I'm working on. And I'm constantly looking at problems that can be solved on a company wide basis, even if it's outside my assigned work area. If you can do this, your promotions will be so much easier to justify. You'll be thinking and performing like an L5 engineer as an L3. And because of that, you're more likely to already be performing at the L4 level. And so people will notice this and will definitely already wonder, hey, why is this guy not a mid-level engineer? He should be promoted. He's already starting to ask the bigger questions that are way above his pay grade. And this is the way I do things. I copy the highest performing engineers who are consistently reliable. And it's thanks to that, copying high performing Apple engineers that I was able to get promoted to senior in four years. So I recommend you try this out. Let me know how you feel in the comments down below. So hopefully you learned a little something about how the process for promotions work. You understand the considerations that people will take when looking at your performance. And hopefully you came away with some knowledge on how to better perform as an engineer and achieve that next level. So that'll do for me. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Also, feel free to connect with me on my socials where you can vote for what topic I cover next. And if you want us to try and secure the next job offer or get promoted yourself, you can book me for interview coaching at eChanTech.com. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one.